This is part 8 of lecture 11 of LEC 5300. We'll be talking about the minimum error formulation of principal component analysis. In this formulation, what we're interested in is not maximizing the variance, but minimizing the error, or if we go back, the average length of these blue lines in the figure here, which are the difference between the data points shown in red and the projections shown in green. So let's try to find a <coughs> set of d-dimensional basis vectors, uh, ui, which is complete. In other words, we have d of them. right? And this is a coordinate system on the da original data set. Right? So each one of these has unit length, and they're orthogonal to each other. And so we can summarize this. Uh, really just by saying that, well, the transpose of ui times uj is just the delta function, the discrete time delta, um, which is 1 if i and j are equal and 0 otherwise. Now, when we're looking at the error, it's most interesting to look at the difference between uh, the data point and the sample mean, because remember that we're really um, not interested in anything that's at the mean, but only interested in the differences between the data point and the mean, which is our expectation. And so if we have any kind of uh, orthonormal set of basis vectors, we can express this difference exactly um, by the sum of a bunch of steps in each of the directions weighted by uh, alpha. Right? And so this is going to be exact because we have exactly the number of dimensions here. So we can get anywhere in the sample space. Now, if we use the fact that things are all orthonormal, then we know that, well, the alpha ni's are just the projection of the uh, data vector, or the difference between uh, the data vector and its mean, onto ui. So that's this shown here, and so if we just replace uh, the alpha ni uh, by the definition here in this equation, we get this equation right here. And so what we'd like to be able to do is, instead of saying, well, I want this delta x n exactly, I only want to use m of these ui's to approximate uh, the um, difference between the data point and its mean. And so that approximation is going to be uh, delta x tilde, which is the difference between the approximation and the mean, which is just going to be the sum, the same sum as this one. The only difference is that I'm going to use, instead of all d components, I'm going to use just m of the components. Right? And so the key question here is, well, how do I choose the UIs so that when I use just M of those, I have the smallest error. So our goal then is to minimize the error in this equation here, J. So this is the average error, squared error between um, X, delta Xn and delta X tilde of N. Now, we know that x tilde of n is just the sum of all the um, steps in the different directions u1 through um, right? and dex delta xn is just the sum over all d. Right? So m here is, remember, less than d. But if we take the difference between uh, this delta xn and this one here, then the difference is just what's ever left over, right? So all the coefficients here that are not included in here are all the ones from m plus 1 all the way up to d. And here I'm substituting in uh, that formula for alpha sub ni. Now, if I'm interested in j, right, then I take the squared 
magnitude of this. And what I can get is that, well, because these are all orthogonal, I just have to take this quantity squared. Right? So I square this quantity uh, from m is equal, i is equal to m plus 1 to d. Right. And then I average it over all the data points, so I average over n. So this thing here is implementing the error. And then what I can do is I can switch the order of uh, these two summations. They're both finite summations, so I can switch them without worrying about it. And then what I get is this thing. Uh, and if I go back to the minimum, the maximum variance uh, formulation, we saw that uh, when we had uh, something like this squared, uh, we got the uh, the uh, u times s times u. So that's exactly what we're going to get in this case, u times s times u, when we have uh, something like this squared. So now uh, we know that the error uh, has this form, which is exactly the same form as the projected variance. Right? The only difference is, instead of looking at the first m components to find the projected variance, I'm looking at the remainder. Right? And so I want this remainder here to be as small as possible. Right? And so by analogy with the maximum variance formulation, in order to make this as small as possible, I need to choose the vectors uh, u such that they are the eigenvectors of the data covariance matrix S that have the smallest eigenvalues. Now, if I choose uh, the u's to be eigenvalues of s, or sorry, eigenvectors of s, right, then according to the same analysis we had in the maximum variance case, right, the variance here is just uh, the eigenvector, or the eigenvalue. Right, and so there, this thing here then, if these are chosen to be eigenvectors, are just the corresponding eigenvalues. Right? And so that's the error. Right? So the sum of all the eigenvalues uh, from m plus 1 all the way up to d gives you a measure of the error or the average squared error. And so this formula is often used to determine the number of coefficients to choose. Right? Uh, because what you want to do is you want to make this error small. And the question is small relative to what? Small relative to the actual uh, size of the data. So if we look at this ratio here, this is the mean squared size of the error divided by the mean squared size of the data. So here I sum over all D, and here I only sum over the last ones after M. And I want to make this as small as possible, so obviously, um, you know, the larger I make M, the bigger, uh, the, the smaller this becomes, right? Because the fewer terms I uh, turn, I sum over, right? And so what I can do is I can set a bound, let's say I want this to be less than 10%, and then increase M, or sorry, decrease M, uh, throwing away more and more components until this error gets too big, 